Okay, this video is what is carbohydrate intolerance and why does it matter? It's actually a big deal and it's easy to understand. Okay, so here's blood glucose level and here is time. When you eat a starch meal just by itself, you get a small increase in your blood glucose level and then it gradually comes back down towards its uh, normal fasting level and it's a good thing. If you eat fat food first, that causes insulin resistance and the insulin resistance makes it the body less able to, this is supposed to say fat uh, first, then carbs, this red line. So if you eat the high fat food first, it'll cause insulin resistance and that'll make the skeletal muscle, for example, less able to take up the glucose into the cell such that blood glucose levels will remain higher and they'll remain high for a prolonged amount of time. That is bad because prolonged elevated blood glucose levels can then lead to damage of other tissues. They can lead to glycation of your hemoglobin and other proteins. They can also lead to damage of the cells that are not designed to function effectively when there's high blood glucose levels like endothelial cells. We'll go into that separately, but this is a key point that if you eat fat first and cause insulin resistance, then you have less carbohydrate tolerance, less ability to tolerate carbohydrates. Okay, so a little more information about it. Uh, carbohydrate tolerance means the ability to tolerate carbohydrates and maintain a reasonable blood glucose level. Most doctors do not know this. Most endocrine doctors do not know this. And this is a big deal because you should understand the main cause of uh, insulin resistance is high fat meal, you know, excessive psychological stress, stress equivalents, those also increase insulin resistance. Um, not understanding this makes doctors say very stupid things like telling um, people to reduce their intake of starches. I've actually heard doctors say things like rice and potatoes are bad for you. No, 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 they're great. Those are two of the best foods in the world. The thing that gets people sick and diabetic and into trouble is eating high fat diets. Um, there's basically two main categories of diets. You know, Pritikin commented on this. There's high fat and low fat diets. And the high fat is nothing but trouble. And the low fat, I actually recommend a very low fat diet. And there's good reasons for that. We'll talk about more of them in separate lectures, but there are very good reasons for that. And that's the sort of the school of Kempner, of McDougall, and of Esselstyn, of Chef AJ, and others. The, the very low fat group has the true uh, healthy people on its side for epidemiology and you know empirical research results. Okay, carbohydrate tolerance is very similar to glucose tolerance, like the oral glucose tolerance test. Also, patients, because they don't understand this, they make very uh, stupid diet choices, like going for low carb, paleogenic, ketogenic diet, all that stuff, and they end up fat and sick. Okay. Um, high dietary fat causes insulin resistance. Insulin resistance means that insulin dependent cells like skeletal muscles and brain neurons cannot take up the glucose that they want. Um, the, these are typically cells that will have glucose type 4 transporters. They're usually abbreviated GLUT4s. And that's real important because in the brain, in your hippocampal cells, your substantia nigra cells, they also have these GLUT4 uh, receptors, transporters for glucose. And those normally, when insulin binds a cell, they're in a vesicle and they move up to the plasma cell membrane of these cells and that enables them to take in more glucose. When they cannot take in more glucose, they can't function effectively. Okay, um, Insulin resistance causes then elevated blood glucose level and there's cells that cannot regulate their uptake of glucose. They don't have glucose type 4, so they get overloaded with glucose and that causes damage to those cells, in particular some neurons and endothelial cells. That's what the whole microvasculopathy is about from endothelial dysfunction with diabetes. If a person eats a high glycemic food alone, the body will usually clear the sugar relatively quickly from the blood. It's not a big deal. But if they eat high fat food first, meat, oils, uh, high fat processed food, then they'll have decreased carbohydrate tolerance and have a prolonged blood glucose spike. And that's bad because the prolonged elevation of blood glucose leads to secondary complications. As I just mentioned, endothelial cells, other cells that can't regulate their uptake of glucose, but also glucose cycles in and out of a ring form to a straight form to a ring form. And when it's in that straight linear form, the uncyclized form, um, un, you know, in a, in a linear chain rather than a, in a circular cyclized chain, it can glycate things. That's what advanced glycation end products are called. That's one mechanism of forming advanced glycation end products. And those stiffen up the whole body and they damage tissue. That's what hemoglobin A1C measurements are about. Uh, we'll talk about that in a separate lecture, but that's a key point to know. Um, 
So again, the problem is not the carbs, it is the high fat food. Dr. McDougall, you know, has a good newsletter on December 2012 and he says, diabetics should be fat counting, not carb counting. Walter Kempner dramatically improved type two diabetics with a diet of rice and fruits and even gave them sucrose when they needed more calories. Here's a couple of references down below. Um, so that's a key point. Carbohydrate, impaired carbohydrate tolerance comes from eating fat.